Hi, I'm Lynn Wise, and with me today is Toba Hellerstein to talk about her most recent Sunday feature on the geopolitics of holy sites. So Toba, we were talking a little bit about uh, before this about how even the naming conventions for these sites and for where they're located are so contentious. So let's start out with that. How do you kind of even talk about this? Yeah, I mean, it's that's not necessarily true for all sites, but certainly the ones in Jerusalem. So um, in particular, the Temple Mount and the Noble Sanctuary, which is a site that is um, very much revered by all Abrahamic faiths, so Jews, Christians, Muslims. Um, but the, the naming of the site really denotes what the specific significance is for each religious community. And so there's a lot of controversy surrounding the language because the language used really denotes why that site would be significant, which has some political implications as to who might be more inclined to claim it. So in your piece, you, you talk a lot about um, the, the conflict between uh, political interests and religious interests when we're, when we're talking about these sites. And kind of the prime example of that is Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, how that dynamic plays there? Sure. So in, in Jerusalem, this is... Um, particularly interesting because you have a site that's claimed by different faiths. It's most geopolitically interesting, though, because it, it Jerusalem as a city is 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 considered contested. So it's contested between um, Israel, which has annexed it after the 1967 war, and um, you know largely the Arab Muslim community, which thinks that it should be in the hands of Palestinians and actually in the hands of Muslims in particular for its religious significance. Um, and it's actually claimed as the capital for both of for, for both a Palestinian state and an Israeli state. So when we get into the geopolitical implications of the holy sites, there's a lot of reasons why um, different nations would claim Jerusalem, but one of the major reasons would be for religious significance. Um, and so when we get into you know why a site would be more or less important for a community that would sort of serve as a justification for political control over that site. And so for the Jewish community, the, the Temple Mount there is, you know, it's the site of the first and second temples. It's considered the holiest site in the Jewish faith. Um, it's also an incredibly important site for the Christian community. Um, and for the Muslim community, it's, it's, um, it's seen as where Muhammad made his, um, his, his pilgrimage from, um, from Saudi Arabia to Jerusalem before going up to, up to heaven. So it's, a, it's an incredibly important site as well. There are some interesting particularities about this, just insofar as um, the way that you know, Israel as a government, after having t you know taken control from the Jordanians after the 1967 war, mm -hmm. had decided to manage the site and kind of manage the competing interests of communities who who sought to worship you know near or around the site, and for political and security reasons, as you were mentioning, the Israeli government decided to disallow Jews from worshiping on the Temple Mount, which is sort of this. Um, interesting irony of history, right? That a Jewish state would disallow Jews from worshiping there and preserve and promote the right for Muslims to worship there. Um, and so this is for political and security reasons, because mm -hmm. after the 1967 war, when Israel was trying to consolidate land that they had taken, um, this was just such a contentious site, and they decided to maintain what was ca called the, the status quo. So the status quo was established under the Ottoman Empire and was preserved under Jordanian rule after the 1948 war, um, which said that all religious communities got to worship at their own sites and, and they had the right to their own sites. Now, obviously under the Ottoman Empire, this was a Muslim site, it was not considered a Jewish site. And so maintaining that status quo ends up meaning that um, it's the access is preserved for Muslims um, and not for, for Jews and Christians per se. Well, that just really shows the, uh, it's a prime example of that conflict between religion and, and political interests. So um, can you talk a little bit about um, Mecca and, and how kind of that dynamic plays uh, there? Yeah, so what's interesting about Mecca is I, I make this parallel between, you know, governments who are trying to balance access of different communities to holy sites and how this plays into geopolitics. Mm -hmm. um, Jerusalem is a more intuitive example, right? Because mm -hmm. you have two different religions, or you know, more than two, um, but two different religions that make it a geopolitical issue. Um, and for Saudi Arabia, for Mecca, this seems less intuitive, right? It's, it's, a, it's a site that's revered by the Muslim faith. And so the reason why this is geopolitically significant and the reason why Saudi Arabia is having difficulties politically in this administration of the site is that we have these new political realities within the Middle East of this power struggle between Iran and Saudi Arabia, which has created 
a divide in the Muslim communities of between Sunni and Shia, which, you know, ex- there were, you know, there was divisions in the past, but it's really increasingly polarized now. And so at this point, one of the major issues that Saudi Arabian monarchy has to grapple with is how do you uphold access um, to the sites for the Sunni faith, for the Shia faith, because as the custodian of the holy mosques of, you know, for Mecca and Medina, Saudi Arabia has to preserve access to all Muslims. Well, mm-hmm. how do you balance that out with geopolitical issues and competition with with Iran, where there's concerns that, you know, pilgrims might, you know, incite political violence or kind of um, have their own political interests? And this was an issue in the past where, um, where the Saudi Arabian Arabian government was concerned about Shia pilgrims engaging in um, an anti-monarchy activity and sort of promoting the Iranian um, political agenda. And so teasing out, you know, where religious worship ends and where politics begins is is also really important in Mecca. That's so interesting, too, though, because we were talking about, um, you know, the conflict between different religions, and now you're talking about conflict within religions as well as that political and re- and religious conflict of interest. It seems like a mess, <laughs> <laughs> and, and definitely, like you said, hard to tease out. But thank you for talking with us today, and I hope to, to see more of this on the site. For more on the geopolitics of holy sites, please visit stratfor.com.